Uh, you can see on the truck shop door, there is a notice based on PPEs or personal protective equipment that we need to adhere to when we're navigating through the truck shop into the different lab areas. Um, so no food or drink is permitted beyond this point. Safety glasses are mandatory. Clear vision only or yellow vision for enhancing with fluorescent lights. Um, and again, you should, depending upon personal preference and the risk, you should be wearing hearing protection if need be. We also have to wear uh, green patch safety shoes uh, to make sure that our feet are completely protected. Another safety aspect to look at in our truck shop, in any truck shop, is the orientation of the doors and its use. Uh, these doors here at Fanshawe College are a constant up, so if you hit the button to go up, then the door goes all the way up, and the rule is all the way up or all the way down. There's no part way, quarter way, because that's when accidents happen, because people expect a passage, and the passage is not there for a vehicle or for a pedestrian or a person walking through the shop, uh, then they can be injured by walking into the door unintentionally. So when the doors are being closed here uh, for safety so that nobody gets trapped under the door, the operator of the door has to press the close button and stay there until the door has completely shut. So if I just press close, you can hear in the background, if I let off, the door stops in its movement. So here all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the door all the way down until it meets its bottom stop and then the operator of the door can walk away from it at that particular point. Never leave any doors at Fanshawe College half up or half down, whichever way you want to look at it. So just a little simple thing, but it can also uh, cause a potential risk or hazard. So safety orientation for fire extinguishers, we do have different stations depending upon the area. So when we're gonna be working around fuels or electrical or something on the chassis where there is combustible materials and there could be potential risk within the shop or on the chassis, we have to have appropriate fire extinguishers in place. A lot of us tend to overlook that when we start to do the work. The very first thing you should do is look around the area uh, assess the area for any risk uh, if you are doing any cutting, grinding, welding, or something that could potentially cause a fire hazard within the shop or on the chassis. Right here is a station, and by all means, if you do have fire uh, safety training or orientation to extinguish a fire, by all means, do that duty to, to do that. If you do not, the best thing to do uh, you don't have to be a hero. You can be a hero by calling 911 or the control center at 452-4400 and report a fire based on the room that we're in. So you would call and let them know that there is a fire within 1095 if they already have not received a fire notification alarm. So behind me here is a large CO2 fire extinguisher. It can be pulled anytime. Anytime a pin is pulled on a fire extinguisher, that fire extinguisher is now rendered useless. If it's sprayed once or the pin is pulled, it has to go back and be recertified so that you know anytime you go to these stations that these fire extinguishers have been checked through tags as well as the pressures and to make sure that they are full. So we have the CO2 large one over here. You can always tell that by the large bell on it, which causes the, the fan of the CO2 to spread out over the air and deplete the oxygen. Works really good for runaway diesel engines, electrical fires, gas fires, and depending on electrical fires. Then there's also an ABC, which is based on its use of paper and light combustibles, you know, for things that are on the chassis. Just remember, if you ever spray this into an engine, that engine would have to be completely disassembled. This one you can spray into an engine, and it will just shut the engine off in the event that you do have a runaway. It's always good to have some safety measures in place and practices in place to make sure that you keep the shop safe, as well as yourself and others that you're working with. So within the truck shop also, through legislation, we have to have 
a WMS MSD station, and you can see that we do have the allocation for the truck shops at 1095 with all the MSDS sheets in there to make sure that you are safely working with any of the products that are within the truck shop, or if there is a product that you're not sure about, then we can look this up and make sure that we know what the protective, uh, personal protective equipment is we're required to use with that product, um, or you know the risk factors for based on health, um, in, inhalation of it that can cause uh, you know you to pass out or faint or to have serious uh, medical related issues if you're around stuff that you're not sure about. So if you're ever unsure, check, ask somebody, refer to the MSDS sheets. So in each bay or at a control station in front of multiple bays in 1095, we have the controls for operating the ventilation system. So we can bring down the vent, you can hear it running in the background, or we can bring it back up and then position it based on where we need it to sit on the chassis. Once we're ready to run this, then we just start the fan and stop the fan when we're done running it so that it's not as loud in the shop. Again, protecting your own hearing as well as everybody else's. Uh, and then we also check the orientation uh, of the fan operating by looking at the light that illuminates to let you know that the fan is running. Sometimes it becomes so noisy down here when trucks are running and fans are running and ventilation is running and there's a bunch of students down here, it becomes very hard to hear if you've got the fan on so you can always look up to see the light and, re and that reinforces that you have turned on the exhaust system. In each area, so 1095, 1089-3 and 1089, the main engines teardown and transmission area all have cleanup stations around each area. It's usually adjacent to doorways on usually both sides. There is also water available, hot water and cold water. Uh, right here we have a mop, which is used for doing cleanup on any spills. But if there is a large oil spill, we would typically go to our spill kit and then pull out the appropriate measures to soak up. Sometimes these are called pig mats or absorbent mats that help soak up the oil. So we soak that up first and then we put them into a overnight fire bin which protects the oil from potentially risk of fire and then it gets cleaned out every evening and that's one of the things that gets done here at Fanshawe is they get cleaned out so that it doesn't leave oily rags in the shop with a potential risk. But if they do happen to be there during the lab days then uh, at least they're closed and we, they're not subjected to any point of ignition. So we also have, um, typically in most stations, we have a dust pan and a little dust broom for cleaning up messes and then we have squeegees that are hanging at each station. So the overnight bins for oily waste provide hands-free operation so that you don't touch anything around here that leaves a potential risk of fire hazard on the outside of this container. Usually it has a plastic bag in here, but it must have just been emptied. Another part about cleaning is personal cleaning. So we want to also make sure that our hands are clean and our face is clean. So we have uh, cleaning stations here so we can clean our hands. There's hand wash. It's it's not hard on your skin, it is a little abrasive to actually clean very well. Uh, of course, paper towel roll, and then behind me we have uh, an eyeglasses cleaning or a lens cleaning station. It's for cleaning our regular vision glasses as well as cleaning our safety glasses so that we can see. Sometimes it gets so hot down here, we kind of sweat out our glasses, so at any time make sure you do uh, clean your glasses so that you can see what you are doing. Okay, we also have pneumatic hose reels around the shop. When they're pulled out, you pull them out until you hear the click. During the click, you let go, it locks it. You pull through the click till you don't hear the click and then it will return back to its spot. Never let this reel go on its own 
because now this becomes potential energy for hazard of injury or damage to equipment. We do have numerous hands-free, uh, motion-activated paper towel dispensers around the truck shop and in the various shops down here. So all you do is just wipe your hand in front of it and it brings you out a nominal size rag for doing work. If in the event you need more rags or a larger piece of a rag, then you can grab a hold of it, lean to the back and pull it down to the size that you need, then tear it off and it's ready to administer another rag for the next individual. So using the safety clean washing stations, there's a lever on the, usually on the right hand side, we just flip that up, it turns on the light, turns on the fluid, and turns on the fluid to the uh, portable brush also. The orientation of that is based on you turning on different levers to either turn fluid on or off here. Uh, it's a very mild solution. Um, doesn't usually irritate the hands, but some people do have sensitive skin. It's always, again, important to make sure that you read the parts cleaner and read the precautionary measures for PPEs. So using the bench grinders, we do have a stationary ventilation system that does filter and it does vacuum out any of the dust that's created from doing any grinding. Perfect example talking about this right now is that somebody has used an aluminum piece of metal onto a regular steel grinding stone and have got all the aluminum filings in there. So if we were to try and dress a drill bit right now, we would get very inaccurate cuts. So we use our uh, dressing stone, which we put on here and we run it back and forth to clean that stone up so that we can use it effectively. Um, this should never have been left like that and make it a practice of your own that if you happen to do that in a truck shop that you correct the stone before you walk away from it so that the next person that needs to use it can use a nice clean stone. So we turn this thing on, it becomes very loud and we do have hearing protection at the station. We also have a face mask at the station with our safety glasses on, keeps us pretty protected in this area for using these tools. Okay, in this safety area here, we have a first aid kit. It's allocated on the wall, so if you're not sure of where they are, make sure you look around, spatially orient yourself within the working environment so that you're safe for yourself as well as others. Uh, and then in the event that you do become injured, even minor or major, make sure that you do uh, uh, talk to an instructor immediately to get the help that you do need. Even the smallest cut should be brought to the instructor's attention so that he may need to look at it for a first aid aspect. If, if uh, it's just within uh, a small um, scratch or a small cut, then we can take care of it here. Otherwise, we would need to contact the control center and follow through with the procedure for reporting a accident. So make sure that if you do have an injury, that you bring it to the instructor's attention. If you come into the shop with an injury, make sure you bring it to the instructor's attention also so that he doesn't expect you to do a lab that you're not physically capable of doing. So again, making sure that you have contact with your instructor pri prior to coming into the shop with an injury or if you're in the shop and you have an injury. Um, you can see also here we have an eye wash station. If you ever need to use the eye wash station, they are checked and regulated. We normally would knock the caps off and then make sure that it's not burning hot or freezing cold. It should be very lukewarm so that it doesn't cause any damage to your eyes. And again, there's also a tripping hazard sign below there that would be put out if in the event that this area was splashed with water because of somebody trying to clean their eye. So again, if you do have an eye injury, make sure you do bring it to the instructor's attention immediately so that we can get the proper first aid attention that is required. Okay, so above the eye wash station or the first aid station, you can see on the wall it says where their fire extinguisher, our first aid station allocation, and then there's a red light. If that red light comes on, it means that there's too much gas in the air or a potential risk for lack of oxygen, so it comes on 
and then uh, make sure that you talk to your instructor or exit the building in the, uh, if those red lights do come on. They sometimes come on momentarily because they take a sniff of a gas, but the ventilation system takes the rest of it out. So uh, again, make sure that if it is on, that you talk to your instructor and determine what you're going to do from there. Okay, just taking a look at some equipment around the shop, sometimes we don't really recognize potential hazards that are there because of really potential energy. If there's energy stored and it needs to be released, sometimes a human body can be in its way and it can cause serious injury to that particular person. Maybe the equipment, but more so what we're concerned about is the person. So using uh, jacks around here or cherry pickers around here, number one, when we're moving them, we use a cantilever that has a wheel on it that helps us orient and move this thing into position. One of the things that uh, is very, very important is understanding how to use a piece of equipment. So we can spread the legs on this thing to neutralize part of the load or enhance the ability of the crane to lift a heavier load. And again, based on the orientation of the mast, whether it's out or it's in. So what we can do is we can go ahead and pull these pins and when we pull those pins out, then we can reposition the legs to spread the load or to be able to fit around a particular engine or engine stand or a component that needs to be lifted. So the real point of all this here on this particular crane is the potential energy it stores and sometimes it's not recognized by students, especially if there's a, an engine or a heavy weight on here, this handle will store more potential energy because a cantilever actually helps us, gives us mechanical advantage to lift this. So now because we've lifted it, we're storing the potential energy in this handle. And if somebody's hand happens to be here to help, or somebody's head happens to be there because they're looking or checking something out, and then this is let go, then you can see the potential energy that is released and the risk that this piece of equipment that typically most people know how to use actually holds. So let's have a look at that. So continuing on looking at different uh, safety practices around here at the college, one thing that students are recommended to take a look at is the student code of conduct. And within that student code of conduct, there's different guidelines for the expected uh, behavior and practices that students are supposed to adhere to while they're here at the college. So again, Fanshawe College always promotes student success. So we have the tools and we have rules and regulations in place to make sure that every student has that uh, opportunity to provide uh, good student success. So as a summary on safety within the truck shop, make sure you adhere to all the rules and regulations that pertain to working down here in the truck shop. Have your proper PPEs, your personal protective equipment on, and that will be required uh, as soon as you walk in through these doors. And again, depending on the area and the type of work you are doing, there may be even more PPEs put into place, like hearing protection or gloves or, or something like that, depending on what you are working on. So again, while you're here at the college um, in, 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 the, in and around the truck shop, make sure that when you are working on things that you're very spatially aware of your environment so that you're not walking into things backwards or bumping into little brackets and pieces that are sticking out. The truck shop is a very dangerous place. The industry out there in the truck shop is a very dangerous place because now there's time requirements on productivity. So here at the college, one, first of all, the very first thing you do is you get good, then you become fast. So make sure you become good enough to protect yourself every single time you're working in and around a truck or in the truck shop or in, out in the industry if you're, as, if you're here uh, as an apprentice. Um, so take that information that you learn here and build it into what you're doing uh, every single day on the job to make sure that you're safe, others are safe around you, and the equipment that you're working on is safe for you to work on and then continue to be safe after it leaves your facility. So again, welcome to the truck shop. And again, make sure you guys do attain or adhere to all the safety practices that are put in place.